He's been preparing you for this very hour. It's That's right. He's just him going He's to the of our heart. Heart. And I'm not making a beam. There's, there's two rooms as well. Hi, I'm John Paul Jackson, and about 18 months ago, I released a warning to America of what God described to me as a coming perfect storm. Since that time, it seems that the term perfect storm has been used to describe everything under the sun, especially if it's unusual or rare, and it had multi-parts that made it come together rather explosively. But 24 months ago, I had only heard the term a few times, and so it was still very profound in my thinking. In other words, it seemed unusual that God would describe it that way. It also is unusual to describe something that way that could be actually very frightening to many of you. I want to revisit the perfect storm to address some of the things that have happened since that time, and also to explain the reasons why I feel God had me to deliver that message. Since my warning, I've already seen a rising of unemployment from about 6% to over 10%, and the decision made by our country's leadership to transfer wealth and job creation from the private sector to the government sector. In the perfect storm message, I spoke of seeing an economic bubble. This was a period of time where the economy would, have, would appear to be riding itself. In other words, a short protected era uh, of time, but it was very thin and very fragile. I said this bubble would provide a period of time for you, you, you to make some financial decisions in a time of relative calm. And I believe we've just entered into that bubble. However, the demise of the dollar and global currency value signals a tidal wave that is rapidly approaching us. The economic element of this coming storm has a part to play in the other four elements, because remember there were five elements that I spoke of. In fact, it ha this economic element has to be in place in order for the other elements to move from mere inconvenience to catastrophic in their nature. We don't have to read too much or listen to too much news reports or TV in order to hear of wars and rumors of wars. This issue of uh, in the perfect storm of war, one of the five elements uh, is very, very important as to the overall buildup. You see, this the war comes in many forms. There's uh, an issue of war with Yemen, for example. Though there's not a war with Yemen, there is warfare type activities happening because the United States has gone in and we've had to bomb some uh, various terrorist groups in Yemen that is now being clearly seen as training Al-Qaeda and other type of terrorist organizations. In fact, we just had, just a couple of days ago, right before filming this this uh, segment here, we, we saw a man coming from, uh, being trained in Yemen, coming from Amsterdam to Detroit on a Delta airline. Uh, actually, I think it was booked on uh, Northwest Airlines, but uh, on a Delta airplane that was meant to blow up that airplane where 228 people or more would have died had that attack been successful. We also talked about uh, by the way, we also talked about new airline attacks that were going to be coming where parts of bombs and, uh, would be left in restrooms and they would assemble the bomb uh, on the plane. Well, just to continue on, on going, because I don't want to reiterate and rehash everything, I just want to also mention Pakistan. Pakistan, the escalation of tensions in Pakistan, the escalation of social and uh, uh, tension and unrest, as well as that social tension being heightened by those who support terrorist activities against the United States and those who do not. Well, in the year and a half since I first described what I'd seen concerning war, we've had the removal of our missile defense systems in Poland. We've seen the treaties in Eastern Europe broken, the massive buildup of the Russian army. And by the way, Russia wants the escalation of tensions and oil prices to go up because it helps fund their military buildup. In the Middle East, the tensions are always going on there, but it seems like it's even heightening. Iran's not only now pursuing nuclear weapons, it's acquiring weapon-grade uranium from other countries. With Israel already in range of, of rockets, Iran is now closer than ever to having a nuclear warhead to put on those rockets. Iran is building allies in anticipation of a preemptive Israeli strike against it. That means simply this. If Israel strikes, um, if Israel strikes Iran, the, the treaties that Iran has with other nations will cause those nations to come or to, to take action, bomb, send rockets, military action of some kind against Israel.
Well, the area of religion has been very quiet over the last year. Yeah, we've, we've just had a patriarch pass away, and I'm afraid there's going to be another patriarch shortly. And when that happens, it'll signal a, a darkening time for the church. And we've had a couple of internationally known uh, evangelists uh, that had moral failures, and that has happened. Uh, those type of things uh, are sad, but I focused on the Christian church in my message, The Perfect Storm, but you really need to remember this, that, that Christianity is just one facet of religion. Every religion is part of this religious scheme that, that I saw. That would also involve Islam. There's a plan in place in the Islamic community to have a radical Muslim in the White House within our lifetime. That means your lifetime and my lifetime. They also have a hundred year plan to have the entire civilized world become followers of Islam. And that could be either by conversion or eradication, depending on which one you choose. They, this, this, I understand that not every Islamic person feels this way, but it is in the Quran and it is uh, adhered to by the radical elements that follow the literal understanding of the Quran. As I saw in the perfect storm, there would be new terrorism in airline flights. This has just happened. The latest occurrence on Christmas Day is the beginning of this new terrorism effort that is going to be given by what we now believe to be hundreds of young men and women who are going to come into this soil, the United States soil, and it isn't going to just attack airlines, it's going to attack other things as well. We're going to see the time will come when almost daily we hear of some attempted bombing or of bombs actually going off. Terrorism, because of religious views, especially in the Islamic community, is going to dramatically increase in the days that lie ahead. Sometimes there's a crossover, as I've mentioned before, there's a crossover between one storm and another storm. One of those crossovers is an issue of war and politics. There was a, a terrorist attempt that was being planned and they captured this man in Massachusetts. On the computers that, that the uh, FBI seized from that man, they found a plan to capture two, uh, kidnap I should say, two U.S. congressmen. Now this is exactly what I spoke about in the, the coming perfect storm, that there would be a plan to kidnap two U.S. congressmen. I'm not sure whether this was the only attempt. I don't think so. I think there probably may be another attempt or two at, at a whole new level in kidnapping congressmen, but at least we know the plan had been thought through, and it was interesting that it was two U.S. congressmen, and that's exactly what I had seen from the Lord, that there would be a plan to, attempt, to uh, kidnap two U.S. congressmen. Well, in this whole political arena, in the last year, God has removed the veil, the inner workings of Washington politics, the corruptness of it, revealing not only moral corruption, but procedural corruption as well. It seems like buying votes is nothing new in Washington. I, I hate to say that, but buying votes to pass unpopular and dangerous legislation that's championed by extreme fringe elements of government actually could be the match that lights a revolt that is just now under the surface, and it could ignite in a huge way. There's anger that's going on in the streets right now in the, in the general populace of the United States. Anger because people feel like no matter what they feel, the leaders of the nation won't vote for what they believe is right. You see, it's one thing to buy a vote for a program that lasts for a year or two, as most programs do it that Congress passes. But to buy a vote that will commit the taxpayer for years and perhaps for their entire lifetime is nothing short of bribery. We have to keep praying for our president. Since I first asked you this, you've uh, last year uh, in the perfect storm, I've had trusted but your prophetic friends tell me of hearing and seeing race riots that were just around the corner. You know, if I, if I can, let me, I forgot to mention one thing to you about the political system. I need to say this. And I hesitated at first, but I think I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. If, if, if I was guilty of doing what the Congress has just done, I would be in jail and our tax exempt status would be stripped from us and all manner of things would be happening to me. Nothing is happening like that in Congress. It's as if evil has become called good and good is now being called evil. It's a sad day. Corruption in all its forms is a condition of society. 
And that society has got to be changed by the church. I want to take just a moment also to tell you in this issue of concerning this issue concerning praying for the president, we're commanded by scripture to do that. I know this is going to be very hard for some of you. Some of you are so angry at what's going on to pray for the man that you believe instigated this is going to be very difficult. But there's a reason why we're commanded by scripture to do so. Let me read, let me read a part of scripture to you from 1 Timothy, the second chapter, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, that's earnest, heartfelt prayers, as well as prayer, as well as intercession, and all giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in civil authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and with reverence. I believe that if we don't pray for our president, we will see warfare and riots and a disintegration of our culture and the American society at levels we've never seen before. The infrastructure of this nation is so fragile. If the, if the culture uh, tends to fall apart or if the culture ex experiences anything, it will topple everything. The culture is the only thing that's holding the fragile infrastructure together. Please join me in praying for our president. God can change any man's heart. If he changed Nebuchadnezzar's heart, he can change any man's heart. Pray for this man that we might live in peace and all might go well with us. Well, geophysical issues. Only a few months after speaking of a pandemic and the, and the perfect storm message, the world was introduced to the H1N1 swine flu pandemic. I had no clue that that was coming at the time. I didn't have any clue that it would happen so quickly. But I remember this. I remember God saying that the first one will not be bad, but the second one will be worse. Well, in this whole issue of geophysical things, we've had record-breaking cold this last winter here in the United States, and certainly a good early start on breaking records for 2010. Here in Texas, Kansas, and Oklahoma, we've had tornadoes in the winter. Last February, we had over 14 tornadoes in one day in February. Tornadoes are very rare, especially in the winter. That many tornadoes are even rarer. All these things were mentioned in the perfect storm message that the Lord had me speak. There are more things that will be coming. Earthquakes, issues of volcanoes, the issues of blight, the issues of, of some type of... of uh, uh, disease that hits hybrid crops. These things are, are ahead in the future, but God has the answer. And to those who can hear him and to those who know him, you will be able to escape the issues that shortly lie ahead. He's been preparing you for this very hour. This That's right. I just have He's the been aware of a heart. And I'm not making this small. Being, there's, there's two rooms as well. Well, many of you have written in and asked why. I mean, that's a big question. Why? A lot of whys. Why? 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 Well, let me see if I can, I can help, help in, in this arena. Some of you said... What's the point of giving a warning about things that are going to happen if you don't know the exact times or exact places? Let's see. Another of you said, what's the point of warning someone about a coming disaster if you can't tell me how to avoid the disaster? And still another one said, I had, uh, had questions about what, what am I going to do? Well, you know, I had the same questions myself, and it's, it's a large part of the reason I didn't really want to share, and I didn't share many of the visions and dreams I had that really began almost 30 years ago. But the Lord spoke to me in early 2008, and He reminded me of those things that He had shown me earlier in my ministry, and He gave me a new, gave me a new heart and, and new revelations about the things we're entering into, a picture of things that are going to be happening in the next 10 years. He said the things, like in Scripture, He said, don't ever say that the things that God has said don't happen because they're about to happen. Prepare yourself for them. I want you to prepare the people, very much like, like God said to Isaiah, and Isaiah said, said to the people. So that's what 
I've shared with you. The reality, and when you take a look scripturally at everything that's, that's gone on in scripture, and if you see God is unchanging and, and still does everything the same way he has, is this. Jeremiah said that he prophesied for 23 years, rising up early, staying up late, talking to the people, telling them you're going into captivity if your heart doesn't change. And in fact, not only are you going into captivity, you're going into captivity for 70 years. All the Lord had me talk about was the next 10 or so years. Je Jeremiah was talking about 70. Then to complicate the issue, Jeremiah was dead before Daniel read the writings of Jeremiah and came to understand, oh, this is what, this is what Jeremiah was talking about. We're in a 70-year captivity. So the Lord began to talk to me and say, just because you don't understand everything and just because the people don't understand everything, don't tell, uh, don't stop telling what I've called you to tell because I have a message in all this. And here's the central message. God is after your heart. And if all you're interested in is things that are going to be happening around you and to the society and to you and to this nation and other nations, you miss the whole point of why God's allowing this to happen. The point is that God wants your heart. He wants your heart. When the heart changes, everything changes. Jeremiah was told this by the Lord in Jeremiah 18. He was said, when the nation that, I, that is doing evil stops the evil that they're doing and in turn does good, I will stop the evil that I was going to bring to it and bring good to it in its place. That's what the Lord is after in the United States. He's not after the judgment. He's after the change of heart. Ezekiel talked about Magog, and that still hasn't happened. Gog and Magog and all the things that are going to be happening there and the bear that takes three ribs in his mouth. All that hasn't, hasn't happened yet, although we, we may be seeing some of the early signs of that potentially coming to pass. It is going to come to pass, but potentially in our lifetime. Then you talked about the Antichrist in the last days. And in fact, some of the stuff he's, he saw, the Lord wouldn't even let him talk about it. He said, seal the book up until the time of the end, which seems to indicate there are things that are going to happen that God is going to reveal in the last days, but only reveal it in the last days. And he said, if you think that's all about the Old Testament, well, there's New Testament issues as well. Jesus talked about the last days in Matthew 24 when he said, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars and kingdom will rise against kingdom and nation will rise against a nation. There's going to be earthquake and famine with distress of nations. There's going to be all this perplexity that's going on. Jesus talked about that, but he never said when it's going to happen. He just said, when you see these things beginning to happen, the end is not yet. But begin to prepare yourself because it is coming. So this whole issue of why, that's, that's, that, that has plagued people from the very beginning of time. Why would God do this? Why wouldn't he tell us more about it? Why? Well, if I'm righteous, why would God have me go through it? There's never been a time where the righteous didn't go through the trouble that the nation went through. There's never been a time where the righteous didn't go through suffering at the hands of evil. The martyrs that were in the Colosseums, that were destroyed by the lions, killed by the lions and, and various animals, they were, they, they, they were not protected. They went through. They were a martyr. There's the issue of martyrdom. We've, we in our society think that if you have any kind of pain, somehow you've, you've, you've sinned or come against God. You, we have this feeling that, that if, if, if we're close to God, then there's a pain avoidance issue. God won't let me go through anything that will hurt me. Yeah, we're going to go through things. Why? Because there's a martyrdom issues. And there is the issue that under the altar, there are martyrs who's, who have not had blood shed yet. In other words, there's going to be coming, coming a time when martyrdom is going to be uh, at the forefront again. And you're going to see a lot of martyrs coming for the sake of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The problem is in our culture, we have a grace, we have, we've come to such a grace issue that we forget righteousness and we seek after grace and we don't seek after righteousness. Here's a tip. Nowhere in scripture does it tell us to seek after grace, but it does says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. 
we, we've got to come to a whole new understanding, the original understanding, I believe, of what grace, what grace is. What is God doing? He's addressing a lukewarm church. Some of you have written in concerning the Mayan calendar and say, well, what about the Mayan calendar? And is it what God is using? I don't know. I didn't even know the Mayan calendar existed when the Lord gave me, gave me these visions. I had no clue about that the Mayan calendar had anything to do with, it, with 2012, let alone there even being a Mayan calendar. I found out a little bit since then, but you know what? I really don't want to find out a whole lot about it. I don't need to because the Mayans... I don't, I don't know whether God actually was spoken, speaking through a donkey there or not. All I know is this, that if we listen to God, he'll tell us everything we need to know. We need to focus on what God does. I do know this, that the Mayan calendar, if it depicts the destruction of the world in 2012, I don't think that's going to happen. Number two, I know. I know that when my son took me to go see the movie 2012 and what I saw in that movie, that's not going to happen either. I know this. There are woes that are going to happen. But it's not the universal destruction of everything as we know it. It is God getting our attention. And if we'll give, us, give him our heart quicker, if we'll give him our attention quicker, you'll see things happen far, far less. God will remove the evil that he intended to bring. Finally, I just want to, I want to say this. Some people say, well, what about personal finance? What should I do? Where should I go? Should I save this? Should I do this? I don't know. I don't know. God, God, the whole issue is not to answer your question. The whole issue is to get you to seek God and hear for yourself. I know he told me that gold was going up. And when he told me this, it was in the $600 an ounce. I think when I released it, it was in the 700 something dollars an ounce. And now it's over $1,100 an ounce. So gold has gone up. I think it's going to go up some more before it's all said and done. I, I, I want to just say this as well. Joblessness is going to increase. When there was a, I think the, when we started making or put out the perfect storm, the jobless rate was in the 6%, maybe in the 5% area, but now it's over 10%. I believe it's going to get worse than, than the 10% or a little over 10% that it is at the current time. I believe, however, as joblessness increases, we're going to see something rather unusual happen, especially with those who know their God. I believe that God is going to release a flood of new products that are going to come. And I think these new products are going to serve low-income families. I think they're going to have a, an advantage to the poor. They're going to be something you can do that's not going to cost a whole arm and a leg to get into. I believe that there's going to be technology for the small man that's going to be released. I think that there'll be niche technological advances that serve small companies and families very well. I believe there's going to be a micro brand boom for small business and small manufacturing because they will be able to cater to a niche market, not have to meet the whole global demand type of thing, but we'll be able to cater and design for the niche, the niche market. I also believe this, that I, I love that the, there's a many Christians in China, and I understand that, but this whole issue, uh, something's going to happen, and there's going to be a tidal wave of don't buy made in China. It's almost like if it has made in China on it, we're not going to buy it any longer. There's something going to happen, and the relationship is going to get even more strained between the U.S. and China, and made in China will not be a name brand that you want to have uh, in this tidal wave that's going to be happening. Finally, there's going to be an issue of internet TV because there's going to be, I believe there's going to be a decrease in network television. I believe some of them are even going to go bankrupt. I believe there's going to be an increase of network television, meaning TV on demand. And I believe that there will be programs that can be produced for a very small budget that will, that will reach millions of people. So there's many things that are going to be coming. There's, there's wonderful things that, that are going to be happening to those who know God. Yes, there's going to be suffering that happens, but there's going to be wonderful things that happen as well. I've got several more questions that I'll, that, uh, I'll be answering, and I'll be doing this in our next episode. If you're not on our email list, please sign up at the top of our webpage. We'll let you know as soon as we can when our next episode will be ready to watch. Until then, may God bless all y'all and listen to him and obey.
He's been preparing you for this very hour. This That's right. He's just him going He's to the front. He's been preparing you. And I'm not making a small thing. There's, there's two rooms as well. One of the largest segments of questions that we've received from you has been on the issue of end times theories, or it's commonly called eschatology. Eschatology takes many different formats, and there's a whole bunch of it out there. It's not about, about when the rapture is going to take place. That's not what I'm, I'm called to do. I'm not called to predict when Christ is going to return. I'm called to help people know him and do that in every way possible. And that's what the perfect storm is, is all about. It's about knowing him. But the perfect storm is not about end times. It's about God drawing us closer to him. As I, as I said in my original message, I wanted to reemphasize this point because I feel God's purpose in this can become quickly lost when we try to use the storms that we're going to go through or the storms I've described as coming to prove or disprove our favorite eschatological theory. You see... God has gifted and called me and prepared me to be a minister in the end times, but not all end times ministries are totally focused on predicting the return of Jesus, the tribulation, the rapture, pre, mid, post-trib, the millennial reign of Christ. Even though I will tell you this, I do believe Jesus is going to sit foot on earth, really sit foot on earth. I don't think it's metaphorical. The revelation I've received over the last 25 years of ministry is not about predicting the future. It's been about preparing God's people to hear God's voice. Restoring the awe of God, restoring the supernatural, the mystical, the ancient ways of the unchanging God we serve, that's what God's called me to do. The importance of dreams and visions is, is a totally, totally a part of all that. The visitations and angels and, and all those type of things is part of the way that God makes himself known to us. You see, Joel talks about the importance of dreams and visions in the last days. He says, in the last days, God's going to pour out a spirit on all flesh, and sons and daughters are going to prophesy, and young men are going to see visions, and old men dream dreams, and, and his servants, maid servants, and men servants. And I think it means his prophets are going to prophesy at a whole nother level than they've, had, they've done before. I think all this is part and parcel to God speaking. However, if we don't understand dreams, if we don't understand how God speaks, then how are we going to know what he's saying? If we don't think it's important, then, then I, don't, I don't get it. If God thinks it's so important to say it in this manner, to speak in these ways, shouldn't we think it's important enough to study it and to learn about it? That's what God's called me to do, to help you understand how to hear from the Holy Spirit of the living God that resides in us. And this Holy Spirit is greater than any spirit that's in the world. We have more power to enlighten others than the enemy has to darken them. And I know I made that word in darken up, but it's a great word. And not only that, the, they serve a fake light. They serve a false light. We serve the true light. We can enlighten them with the Holy Spirit, the presence, the word of the living God. I want you to know the God that you serve. And I want you to be prepared to overcome what the enemy wants to set in your way. You're going to go through it, but you can overcome it. So what I've done is I've tried to put out the perfect storm to help you, to prepare you, to return your heart back to, back to him. I don't want it to seem like I'm against the study of end times. Please, I'm not. Actually, I found, found eschatology fascinating. There are theologians and entire ministries that have devoted their lives to the study of this ministry, and this, this end times ministry. But if I turn my focus to what they do, who's going to do what God has created and gifted me to do? I want to encourage you to do the same in your life in 2010. Do what God has gifted you to do. If you don't, perhaps you'll be guilty of not valuing the way God made you. He made you, designed you, birthed you to live in this era and set you in the house you live in, the apartment you live in, the trailer you live in, wherever you live, he's determined the exact place you should live. Why? Because he's put something in you that will change everyone you come in contact with. That's what I'm trying to do with what God has called me to do. I'm trying to be faithful 
to that. You hear from God. You get close to him, and you will hear from him. You seek him. He will be found of you. And your whole life and everyone you touch, including your family, will be changed for his glory. I ask that the Lord be with you and that for the greatness of his name's sake, that his name would be found in you, all of his names, every characteristic, every attribute that he has would be found in you. And that in the coming storms, because they are coming, you will be more than an overcomer because of he who dwells in you. May he be glorified in it for his great name's sake. God bless all y'all. We'll talk again. Coming up on Joni, recent political turmoil and devastating natural disasters are causing many to wonder what's next for the world. Author and expert on biblical prophecy, John Paul Jackson, joins us to share his insights on what we can expect. There are consequences to a lack of righteousness. Yes. In the United States, there's some difficult things coming. God wants us to know what's going on, and He also wants us to have a, a great relationship with Him. Find out how you can prepare up next on Joni. Everyone has a story. The key to communication is making a connection. Every life has something to share. The world is crying for love and acceptance, and this is something that we as Christians can give them. From tragedy to triumph, your memories will always be of the adventure, not the arrival. So savor the ride. This is real talk about real topics that will change your life. Did you know that dreams are God's way of getting you to your future? He knows what's coming and he's going to help you get there. So grab a seat and join the conversation. This is Joni Table Talk. Well, for the body of Christ, prophecy can speak to our current state or give us insight into the things to come. So what is God speaking to the United States and the rest of the world, and what should our response be? You're going to want to stay tuned to find out. Joining me around the table is my dear friend, Melanie Brando. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. All right. She told me before we went on, she had gum. Where is it now? Did you... It's not on the air. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we always tell everything it's around here. Up. And Anna Kendall, so good to see you. Always so good to see you. You've and got I'm... your pink on today. Yes. I'm trying to match Cindy over there. Yes, so you did. <laughs> anyway, I'm excited nice. about this show. We're always excited to have John Paul, aren't, aren't we? we, though? And Cindy Murdoch, are you excited as well? I am. There's a lot going on in this world. There is a lot going a on lot. in the world that we want to learn. And John Paul Jackson, welcome back. Thank you. It's, it's always so good to have you. Um, you know, most of you will remember John Paul sharing about the vision God had given to him regarding the U.S. Uh, the ocean water was thick with sludge, and there was a breakdown to the infrastructure. This was all prior to the Gulf oil spill and the economic meltdown. So I asked him to come back and share what God's been showing him today. And so many of you have written me and said, will you have John Paul on and let him talk? So I'm throwing it to John Paul right now and tell us what is the Lord saying? We want to have ears to hear. And there are people out there right. very eager to hear what God is saying. Well, we, we, God wants us to know what's going on. And he also wants us to have a, a great relationship with him. Mm. Uh, and so the primary issue of, of all these things happening is not like because God hates us, it's because God's, God Thank loves you. us. Thank you. And he wants us that. to understand yeah. that a lack of righteousness affects everything that we do. There's mm -hmm. nothing that it doesn't affect. Religion is affected. Economics is affected. Political system is affected. Mm -hmm. Geophysical issues are affected. There's nothing that's not affected when righteousness does not rule. What God wants us to do is he wants, he wants us to recognize that there are consequences to lack of righteousness yes. and that that which he created suffers when righteousness mm -hmm. doesn't rule. That's why Romans 8, it, the earth is, separate, uh, is subject to futility when righteousness doesn't rule. So the things that are happening is because righteousness is not ruling in the earth right now. So and that's part of the earth groaning and the, the rocks are crying out. Right. Exactly. And, the, and if that didn't happen, the trees would cry out. Exactly. And everything, if whatever happens, all of creation is waiting mm -hmm. for this righteousness, the righteousness of God. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of us seek the kingdom, which is kind of the destruction of evil, but very few seek righteousness. We don't remember. We have mm -hmm. to seek mm -hmm. righteousness. 
Well, so the, the outgrowth of that is that just as Paul said, my, my body wars within itself, then the earth wars within itself. It is, it is a body. In fact, the Hebrews understood it to be, uh, the earth to be like a, 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 a woman, in, a pregnant woman. So what is going on, there's birth pains that are happening right now. There are pains that are going on. There's a move of God that is starting to bubble up like the bubbles on the bottom of a pan. And there's a move of Satan that's doing the same thing. The political um, systems are being impacted. Yeah. The religious systems are being impacted. Geophysical systems, economic systems, right. et cetera. Everywhere you look. Yeah, and that's why we're seeing why we're seeing what we're seeing yes. today. The, so, the Mississippi flooding we just right. went through, well, and all the tornadoes. Yeah. And the tornadoes uh, the other day, uh, the, uh, the Missouri tornadoes, right. the, uh, yes. um, the uh, Alabama Johnson. tornadoes. And so, are you saying that it's not necessarily God saying, "I'm mad at this area and I'm going to flood him out or I'm going to swallow him up in an earthquake," but it's the earth travailing? Because I've heard that some. And yeah. so in it, then I'm thinking, well, then when what happened to Joplin, it's like, well, is God mad at Joplin now? You know, because some people are preaching that. Right, right. I would not say God's mad at Joplin. I would say the earth is, is travailing and it's warring within right. itself. There's good, there's bad that is warring within itself, so to speak. And so you see the outgrowth of that. A tornado was caused by, by two, two opposite winds and temperatures right. intersecting at a high rate of speed and causing a tornado. So you have hot and cold air, moisture included, and it, it causes a, 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 a tornado start like this and then they begin to go like this. Mm -hmm. Well, what about those who would say, you know, the story in the Bible where Jesus walked on the water and he spoke to the storm? Obviously, mm -hmm. God can control all of those elements. Absolutely. So people might say, well, if he's a good God, I'm playing the devil's advocate yeah, right yeah. now. No, no. If he's a good God, then why would he allow these things to happen? And over right. 400 right. people have been killed this year so far in tornadoes. Mm -hmm. Did you realize yes. that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, just in the United States alone, the weather has been uh, remarkably severe, and not to mention the rest of the world has been remarkably severe. Talk, talk about severity. Go to Australia and find out about the poison frogs they had, the poison snakes yes. that are having, the cyclone what that is hit that half. All about? I mean, the, the same thing. The same thing. It's That's the, almost like it's the, the plagues. Earth. Yeah, it's, it is. It, it makes you think of that. Yeah. God wants to get our attention that righteousness is not just an issue of, of what happens in Dallas, Texas, or in Birmingham, Alabama, or in St. Paul, Minnesota. Righteousness mm -hmm. is a global issue, just like the, the earth right now, and the nations are facing global issues. Mm -hmm. And so true. righteousness becomes a global issue. The smaller the earth becomes, the more righteousness becomes a global issue. So mm -hmm. do you feel like God has given you a word for America? Like what we can expect, is it going to get better or is it yeah. going to get worse before it gets better? Yes, yeah, so I have, it's, I don't, I, I, I don't understand how God, why God uses me for this. Well, I just want to go on does. record saying it is, I would rather it not get worse before it gets better. Uh, so. There are some difficult things, there are some difficult things coming. There really are, in, in the United States, there are some difficult things coming. And we should prepare how? The, there's no way to prepare individually as far as uh, do I store water, do I store food, yeah. what do I do? I mean, because every place is going to be different. Mm -hmm. it, it, what happens in Tuscaloosa isn't going to be what happens in Knoxville. What happens in Knoxville won't be what happens in Denver. What happens in Denver right. isn't going to be what happens in Fargo. So there, each individual place is going to have the issues that, that God chooses to get the attention of the people to seek Him. Now, He's not causing it, but, but the lack of it. righteousness right. uh, keeps the storm from coming. Righteousness, mm -hmm. Jesus was able to stop the storm because of the righteousness authority, righteous authority that he carried. If we had that righteous authority, we can, we can mm -hmm. do a lot That's of things like that as well. But it has to be righteousness and mm -hmm. authority based on righteousness. Righteousness is based on a relationship with God. Exactly. There is no righteousness without relationship That's right. with God. That's what it is. So, so what kind of things do you see happening over the next, say, 2012? Uh, riots are coming. Riots in the streets are coming. And if we're not careful, uh, shortly after the next election, the anger will mount so much that we'll end up having martial law declared. And there's, there are six cities in the United States that, and there may be more than six, but I have seen six cities in the United States where martial law was declared. And where did you loss see of life, Loss of life was taking place. So you see Detroit, you see Los Angeles, you see New York, you see Atlanta, you see here in Dallas. Surprisingly, and then and then uh, there's one other mystery city that I saw, but I don't know the name of the city. 
And it's interesting how the law is preparing for those things to happen because there was recently just um, a city that now has declared it legal for the uh, city police or the government to come into a house and people cannot defend themselves. They can come in without mm -hmm. warrant writs or anything of the type unannounced and the people are not allowed no longer allowed to defend themselves and so it's almost like now um, we're going to see a shift in exactly what we can and cannot tolerate. We are and that, that our freedoms are going to grow smaller and smaller as these type of things start, start to increase. Uh, the financial pro uh, issues are going to be uh, going to get much much worse. Um, the euro is going to end up collapsing and the dollar will not be far behind it. It'll be a matter of weeks uh, before the dollar ends up following suit with that. So people need to get out of debt. People need to get out of debt. They need to get things paid off. They need to get, but the, the key is you would need to get in right relationship with, with God. God. If, if you're yes. close to God, you'll hear what he has to say. We all need to get closer to God to hear what he has to and say. And the righteousness of God can protect us in the midst yes. of the storm. Yes. You know, it's it kind of like if, if God says that the place for us to be is in Iraq, then that's where we're going to be safe. That's where we, exactly. So we've got to be where God tells us and that righteousness will protect us. Yeah, you always say, okay. Joni, best place to be is in the perfect will yes. of God. The, the safest, safest place, place in the universe is in the perfect will of yeah, God. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Well, don't move. We continue our table talk about the prophecy with John Paul Jackson when Table Talk returns. Well, today we're talking with John Paul Jackson about prophecy and what God has been showing him. Next, I want to talk about the rest of the world. There are more economic and geophysical events that the world is going to face. Uh, is that true? That's, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And we yeah. have to talk about Israel, the we apple do. of God's right. eyes, because you know, yeah. over the last few weeks, it has been kind of in the spotlight and even our president saying and doing some things towards Israel that are totally against let me just say biblical just, or Bible prophecy. Right. Just recently yeah. I saw Netanyahu speak to Congress. Oh, was it powerful. He I think he had fifty two ovations, which is oh. more than many presidents wow. get. They interrupted him fifty two times with applause and I mean he was standing strong and he was diplomatic and you know he he's a miracle. He is one of the things that, speaking of Israel, because one of the things that the Lord showed me again before uh, when um, Libni was actually Prime Minister of Israel, the Lord showed me that uh, Netanyahu would be the next, next president, I mean the next premier, Prime Minister of Israel, and that God had chosen him because he was going to have to make some incredibly difficult decisions. And those decisions are about, he's about to face what those decisions are. And he's so well versed are. in American mm -hmm. culture because he was yes. schooled here and his schooled English him. is so right. good in, in negotiation. But let's talk a little bit about that first question I asked about the dynamic between America, our president, and Israel. Well, if you take a look at, uh, at scripture, you take a look at Zechariah. Zechariah prophesies that Jerusalem is going to be a cup of trembling. It's going to be a millstone around the neck of anybody who supports it. And so what's happening is, unfortunately, some of our political leaders are taking a stance that, that, that Israel, and in particular Jerusalem, uh, is going to be, it needs to, it needs to take, be held by different hands or coexist in a coexisting uh, dual state uh, where the, both capitals exist in Jerusalem itself. And, and uh, b b according to Bible prophecy, the, the Jewish nation cannot do that. That's right. I, w I wish many of our political leaders would just read the Bible yes. and believe the Bible yes. and understand yes. this. They're following in line with everything that it, that it says is going to be happening in, in Scripture. Mm -hmm. we, the scriptural standpoint is God gave, made a covenant with Abraham, reiterated that covenant with Isaac, reiterated that covenant with Jacob. I give this land to you forever. Mm, it does forever. not stop. It yeah. is forever. Nothing will change it. Nothing will stop it. This land 
is, is there. This is what we're looking at a strictly Bible issue here. Yeah. This has nothing to do with, with anything but the Bible. We're looking at, at the Bible. I understand that there have been issues on both sides of the, of the field, issues of atrocities historically with, with uh, the uh, Palestinian arena and, and the Arab arena, issues with the Jewish arena. I understand all that. But we have to look at what the Bible the Bible says about about this. So when one of the things that I had mentioned uh, uh, about three years ago was that Mubarak, a little over three years ago, Mubarak would be removed as president of Egypt, and that he would end up passing away, which he's he's now dying of cancer. I found out, and that Egypt would become when he passed away, Egypt would become a terrorist state, and that when that happened, there would be an escalation of of uh, terrorist activity. And when he was removed from office, there had been escalation of terrorist activity uh, in, in Israel itself. Well, since he has been removed from, from office, there has been mm-hmm. a bomb at a bus station. There, is, there has been riots in the street. There were 16 people killed just, just a few days ago uh, and riots on the border with Syria and with, with Israel. There is mm-hmm. an escalation yes. of tensions, and it won't be long until Hezbollah and Hamas start forming a union of how to how to take Israel out. Okay. Will, be an esca- will President Obama or any leader of any country be able to divide Israel? No, Yay. no, no, because the, Isra- the Israel government and people know that if they, well, they, they just can't do it. They, they, they know what the Bible says. They know what scripture says. They know what the Torah says regarding, regarding everything that the land has been to them. And to them, we might as well become extinct if, we're going to, if this is going to happen. Mm-hmm. So they would rather face extinction yeah. than to give up that land. What should yeah. be the attitude of America if our government stops supporting Israel? What should we as Christians who love Israel we do? We need to pray, for yeah. one. Well, yes. It, it's, one, it, Proverbs says that the heart of a king is like a river, and God can turn it whichever way he wants yes, it to go. We yes, have to pray yes. that God turns the heart of the That's king, okay. all, all leaders. Because he can still do that. Because he can good. still do that. Yes, I'll tell you, good. all it takes, and you know, you're watching right now, all it takes is for, for God to visit, have Gabriel visit any of our political leaders, and believe me, yes. things will change real, yes. real quick. That's right. One so word it, from God. Yeah, yes. One word from can God. Can change your yes. life forever. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Everything changes. So yes. pray. We need to pray and ask, yes. ask God to prayer. do what he knows will change the mind of, of the king or the leaders. What about the, the 1967 borders that we heard of President Ike? I know I keep coming back to this, but so many people are talking about this. The 1967 borders, that Israel must go back to those borders. Explain why that's so dangerous. Well, because uh, <laughs> they were attacked when they had the borders that they had in 1967. Hussein of Jordan actually was going to build hotels on the Temple Mount. Mm. Wow. And break it a world center tourist attraction. What the whole six day war was about was, a, was over Jordan's desire to make it a financial center wow. mm. and the Jews' desire to keep it as a holy, as a holy wow. place. Amazing. So, other places of the world, real quickly, you mentioned Japan. Japan, Mount Fuji will one day erupt. I actually had an encounter where I felt like I was there. I watched the, the high speed train go by, I watched the mountain. They will be given three warnings that it's about to happen, uh, but the, uh, uh, Mount Fuji, when I, when I declared this, it was, a, it was a dead volcano. Now they say it's a dormant volcano, and now with the recent earthquake that just happened in Japan, they now say that there is activity going underneath the volcano, and there's earthquake activity wow. underneath Mount Fuji. They will be given three warnings. The warnings will be three different plumes of smoke or steam will come out of that volcano, the sides of the volcano, before the volcano itself will erupt. After the third one, then it will erupt. And so there's three signs that the Japanese people will be given before the eruption takes place. What, some, some of the other countries? Africa, South America. Uh, well, Africa is going to experience, Central, Central Africa is going to experience a storm that is so huge it will rain for two weeks without stopping. It will flood so, many, so much land. Airports will be closed. Aid will be almost impossible to get in. Uh, and uh, it, will, it will be stopped by a word from God. Praise it will God. be stopped by a word from God, and it will be a sign from heaven about what God is getting, getting ready to do. It will catch the attention of all of the, of the world, especially Africa, and it will cause a great outpouring of God's Spirit Hallelujah. in, in uh, Africa, especially Uganda, Tanzania, and uh, uh, wow. Kenya, Kenya, and Zimbabwe. Wow. China. 
China is going to continue to grow. Uh, the Lord showed me that they are, were going to conspire with Russia and that there was going, they would be there, uh, Russia, China, and three other countries that the Lord didn't tell me what they were, but Russia, China, and three other countries were going to conspire to defuse the dollar, to dismantle, bring down the dollar in order to, in order for the, uh, to repay the United States for something. And uh, it happened because the real estate bubble in, in Hong Kong and in Shanghai and Beijing and other places in China, the real estate bubble burst. And when the real estate bubble bursts, that will be a sign that, that they are going to start uh, aggressively trying to take the dollar down. Wow. Are y'all okay. loving all this? Yes. <laughs> it's, so, it's so interesting. Well, we have to take a short break. Anna wants to talk. Melanie, Cindy, we all do. We all, we'll come right back uh, when the table racks. We look at what all this means to believers yes. and how we should respond. Stay right there. Well, when we hear such heavy prophecies as we have today, it can be tempting to want to worry. But as believers, God gives us these words so we know He is at work and to help us prepare. And He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of Amen. power and of love and a sound mind. And I mean, really, as we're listening, we we could get overwhelmed with it. I think yeah. Anna said the last, you know, thing. Well, well, what is the timetable that the Lord has shown you on some of the, these yeah. things happening, and how with, how is that going to coincide with the coming of the Lord? Because I know we can't put dates, yeah. you know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. hello. But I mean, are we close the season, to the coming right? of the we Lord? Are. We are close, obviously. I don't know the day or the hour either, but right. I know the signs, Jesus, yeah. you know, the, the thick trees blooming. But we've been hearing blooming. that all of our, our life, that Jesus yeah. is coming. What I mean, when you say it's close, are we saying 10, 20, 30 years? Well, let's just take a look at, at okay. what you read in the newspapers and what you can read in other, other news reports. And this is not prophetically mm -hmm. speaking. This is simply that everybody can read. And that is, mm -hmm. there has never been a cry for one world financial system like there is today. Yes. There's never been a time when our political leaders are mentioning it thinking about it, even making plans, what would it look like? What would be the scenario for mm -hmm. this to happen? You've never, we've never had that happen yet. The Bible clearly says that's what's going to be taking place in the last days. Mm -hmm. So we now know we are closer than the, than the earth has ever been mm -hmm. to having a one world system, a one world order, and to being able to communicate uh, visually in, in remarkable ways. You could have literally had the Antichrist communicating visually to every person on the face of the earth today. Oh, wow, that is so mm -hmm. true. Wow, That's true. with technology. He may yeah, be, with technology. for all we know. And he, so he may, he may be alive today. He, that's, that's really true. But the, the, here's the issue, and that is one thing I, I think we uh, culturally have kind of lost, and that is the battlefield promotions of God. We can be promoted. We will be promoted in the battlefield with God. When we are, are walking, walking with God in, in life, no matter what battles come our way, when, one, we can overcome them through Him. Number two, we will be promoted with the very things that are trying to take us out. Right. And the Bible is full of those individuals that, wow. that have that. Let's say that one again. That's, That's good. We can be promoted by the very things that are trying to take us good. out. Joseph's slavery was actually the event that yes. began Joseph's promotion. Yes. Joseph being thrown into the dungeon was actually what began his promotion. But, but get this. Here is, here's something that, that you really may want to take a look at at home as well. Oh. In, in 1 Samuel, we are, taught, we are told about Saul, and he consulted the witch of Endor. The witch of Endor called Samuel up. <laughs> Samuel says, tomorrow you are going to join me. In other words, you're going to die in battle tomorrow. Right. Now, 2 Samuel chapter 1 comes along, and, we, and it says, and the battle begins. And where Saul is actually killed by the, by, by the Philistines who attack him right. on Mount Gilboa. Okay, but between there, there's three chapters that, that happen. And here's, here's what we find out. David had run from Saul to the Philistines. David was ch being chased 
trying to be killed by Saul numerous occasions. Won't go into all that, but we all know it was not a good thing right. for David. Right. David's right. going like, why is this happening to me? Right. Samuel anointed him to be king, and look at me. I'm stuck in Adullam's cave. I'm running everywhere I go. Right. Next thing we find out is that he tries to join the Philistine army, and, and even they won't accept him. <laughs> <laughs> they reject him, and so David is going, oh, man, what? In the, even my enemies won't even take me. Yeah, right. And so he leaves, and he goes home. But, but here, get, get this. Before we go on to the rest of the story, that battle is the battle where Saul lost his life. David would have been fighting with the Philistines against Saul, where Saul lost his life. David would not take him in the cave. David would not take him in the, in the camp when he was asleep. David did, would not raise his hand against Saul, but here's what would have happened. Had David joined the Philistines and had they fought against Israel, when they, cap, when they came towards Saul, they would have said, David, you go kill him. And if you don't go kill him, then you're not with us. We're going to kill you. Mm -hmm. wow. So what happens is so God spares David from the battle where Saul died. But here's the rest of the story. When it looks like, what is wrong? The rest of the story is, so he leaves and go back to Ziklag. Yes. And when he gets to Ziklag, he finds out that mm -hmm. the, the Amalekites have taken his family. The whole city, has, the town has been cleaned out. And had he gone into battle with the Philistines, he would have lost everything that he had at home. Wow. Yes. Everything. So and God's so, plan, we just don't so understand God has it a as plan that we don't understand. And that's what I want, to, want you to, you to know at home. Yes. God has a plan. You may not understand what that plan is. It may look like, why is this happening? Right. And it, all it is is God saying, I'm going to take you and pass of righteousness for my great name's yes. sake. Excellent. And we are to occupy until yes. he comes. We are. To be that's about right. the Father's business. Yes. Continue to share the love of God Amen. and walk in faith, not fear because God has it all under control yes. he and he loves us, doesn't he? he? Loves he does. us. Yes. So anyway, thank you so much, ladies. Oh, thank you, thank John you. Paul. Thank you for sharing. You. So You have to come back. We just barely Never scratched the time. surface. Never, Never have enough time. But thank you so much for watching. If you need prayer today, please go to the phone and call. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today. This has been a Daystar Television production. He's been preparing you for this very hour. This That's right. He's just been the of a heart. And I'm not making a small of beam. There's, there's two rooms as well. Hi, I'm John Paul Jackson. And about 18 months ago, I released a warning to America of what God described to me as a coming perfect storm. Since that time, it seems that the term perfect storm has been used to describe everything under the sun, especially if it's unusual or rare, and it had multi-parts that made it come together rather explosively. But 24 months ago, I had only heard the term a few times, and so it was still very profound in my thinking. In other words, it seemed unusual that God would describe it that way. It also is unusual to describe something that way that could be actually very frightening to many of you. I want to revisit the perfect storm to address some of the things that have happened since that time and also to explain the reasons why I feel God had me to deliver that message. Since my warning, I've already seen a rising of unemployment from about 6% to over 10% and the decision made by our country's leadership to transfer wealth and job creation from the private sector to the government sector. In the perfect storm message, I spoke of seeing an economic bubble. This was a period of time where the economy would, have, would appear to be riding itself. In other words, a short protected era uh, of time, but it was very thin and very fragile. I said this bubble would provide a period of time for you, you, you to make some financial decisions in a time of relative calm. And I believe we've just entered into that bubble. However, the demise of the dollar and global currency value signals a tidal wave that is rapidly approaching us. The economic element of this coming storm has a part to play in the other four elements, because remember there were five by the radical elements that follow the literal understanding of the Quran. As I saw in the perfect storm, there would be new terrorism in airline flights. This has just happened. 
The latest occurrence on Christmas Day is the beginning of this new terrorism effort that is going to be given by what we now believe to be hundreds of young men and women who are going to come into this soil, the United States soil, and it isn't going to just attack airlines, it's going to attack other things as well. We're going to see the time will come when almost daily we hear of some attempted bombing or of bombs actually going off. Terrorism, because of religious views, especially in the Islamic community, is going to dramatically increase in the days that lie ahead. Sometimes there's a crossover, as I've mentioned before, there's a crossover between one storm and another storm. One of those crossovers is an issue of war and politics. There was a, a terrorist attempt that was being planned, and they captured this man in Massachusetts. On the computers that, that the uh, FBI seized from that man, they found a plan to capture two, uh, kidnap, I should say, two U.S. congressmen. Now, this is exactly what I spoke about in the, the coming perfect storm, that there would be a plan to kidnap two U.S. congressmen. I'm not sure whether this was the only attempt. I don't think so. I think there probably may be another attempt or two at, at a whole new level in kidnapping congressmen, but at least we know the plan had been thought through, and it was interesting that it was two U.S. congressmen, and that's exactly what I had seen from the Lord, that there would be a plan to, attempt, to uh, kidnap two U.S. congressmen. Well, in this whole political arena, in the last year, God has removed the veil, the inner workings of Washington politics, the corruptness of it, revealing not only moral corruption, but procedural corruption as well. It seems like buying votes is nothing new in Washington. I, I hate to say that, but buying votes to pass elements that I spoke of. In fact, it ha this economic element has to be in place in order for the other elements to move from mere inconvenience to catastrophic in their nature. Well, you don't have to read too much or listen to too much news reports or TV in order to hear of wars and rumors of wars. This issue of uh, in the perfect storm of war, one of the five elements, uh, is very, very important as to the overall buildup. You see, this the war comes in many forms. There's a, an issue of war with Yemen, for example. Though there's not a war with Yemen, there is warfare type activities happening because the United States has gone in and we've had to bomb some uh, various terrorist groups in Yemen that is now being clearly seen as training Al-Qaeda and other type of terrorist organizations. In fact, we just had, just a couple of days ago, right before filming this this uh, segment here, we, we saw a man coming from, uh, being trained in Yemen, coming from Amsterdam to Detroit on a Delta airline. Uh, actually, I think it was booked on uh, Northwest Airlines, but uh, on a Delta airplane that was meant to blow up that airplane where 228 people or more would have died had that attack been successful. We also talked about uh, by the way, we also talked about new airline attacks that were going to be coming where parts of bombs and, uh, would be left in restrooms and they would assemble the bomb uh, on the plane. Well, just to continue on, on going, because I don't want to reiterate and rehash everything, I just want to also mention Pakistan. Pakistan, the escalation of tensions in Pakistan, the escalation of social and uh, uh, tension and unrest, as well as that social tension being heightened by those who support terrorist activities against the United States and those who do not. Well, in the year and a half since I first described what I'd seen concerning war, we've had the removal of our missile defense systems in Poland. We've seen the treaties in Eastern Europe broken. The massive unpopular and dangerous legislation that's championed by extreme fringe elements of government actually could be the match that lights a revolt that is just now under the surface, and it could ignite in a huge way. There's anger that's going on in the streets right now in the, in the general populace of the United States. Anger because people feel like no matter what they feel, the leaders of the nation won't vote for what they believe is right. You see, it's one thing to buy a vote for a program that lasts for a year or two, as most programs do it that Congress passes. But to buy a vote that will commit the taxpayer for years and perhaps for their entire lifetime is nothing short of bribery. We have to keep praying for our president 
since I first asked you this, you uh, last year uh, in the perfect storm, I've had trusted but your property friends tell me of hearing and seeing race riots that were just around the corner. You know, if I, if I can, let me, I forgot to mention one thing to you about the political system. I need to say this. And I hesitated at first, but I think I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. If, if, if I was guilty of doing what the Congress has just done, I would be in jail and our tax exempt status would be stripped from us and all manner of things would be happening to me. Nothing is happening like that in Congress. It's as if evil has become called good and good is now being called evil. It's a sad day. Corruption in all its forms, is a condition of society. And that society has got to be changed by the church. I want to take just a moment also to tell you in this issue of concerning, this issue concerning praying for the president, we're commanded by scripture to do that. I know this is going to be very hard for some of you. Some of you are so angry at what's going on to pray for the man that you believe instigated this is going to be very difficult. But there's a reason why we're commanded by scripture to do so. Let me read let me read a part of scripture to you from 1 Timothy, build up of the Russian army and by the way Russia wants the escalation of tensions and oil prices to go up because it helps fund their military build up. In the Middle East, the tensions are always going on there, but it seems like it's even heightening. Iran's not only now pursuing nuclear weapons, it's acquiring weapon grade uranium from other countries. With Israel already in range of of rockets, Iran is now closer than ever to having a nuclear warhead to put on those rockets. Iran is building allies in anticipation of a preemptive Israeli strike against it. That means simply this. If Israel strikes, um, if Israel strikes Iran, the, the treaties that Iran has with other nations will cause those nations to come or to, to take action, bomb, send rockets, military action of some kind against Israel. Well, the area of religion has been very quiet over the last year. Yeah, we've, we've just had a patriarch pass away, and I'm afraid there's going to be another patriarch shortly. And when that happens, it'll signal a, a darkening time for the church. And we've had a couple of internationally known uh, evangelists uh, that had moral failures, and that has happened. Uh, those type of things uh, are sad, but I focused on the Christian church in my message, The Perfect Storm, but you really need to remember this. that Christianity is just one facet of religion. Every religion is part of this religious scheme that that I saw. That would also involve Islam. There's a plan in place in the Islamic community to have a radical Muslim in the White House within our lifetime. That means your lifetime and my lifetime. They also have a 100-year plan to have the entire civilized world become followers of Islam. And that could be either by conversion or eradication, depending on which one you choose. They, this, this, I understand that not every Islamic person feels this way, but it is in the Quran and it is uh, adhered to.